Hey, Jonathan here at Topsaw. I'm gonna to go over the Plumber and Pipe Fitters Union math exam and specifically a few of the problems that I didn't go over before on ratio, proportions. I'm gonna go over some problems like 13, 14, 15, and 16 in this practice math test. I'll put the whole test in a link in the description so you could print it out and work through it do the problems on your own first and then i'll go through them in this video i'm only going to do a few on um, ratio and proportions so this is a sample math test for the plumbers and steam fitters local 486 math exam. I, I did make a video of going through this. I skipped a lot of the problems just so the video wouldn't be so long. And then I just got an email today from someone studying for the exam asking me to go over problems 14, 15, 16, and 17 in this exam. So these are the problems I'm going to go over in this video. Okay, so before I go over these problems right here, I just want to go over a little bit about ratio and proportion because all four of these problems are exactly the same. They're setting one ratio equal to another ratio, which is a proportion. So let's say I go three miles in two hours. That's a ratio because it's one unit over another unit. It's a rate of speed, miles per hour. And then let me set that ratio to another ratio. Let's say I travel four hours and I want to know how many miles that is. So setting one ratio equal to another ratio is a proportion. There's a lot of ways you could solve this proportion, one of which is just to cross multiply. And in cross multiplying, you take the upper left and the lower right, you multiply those together to get 12. And then you set that equal to these two things multiplied together. Question mark times two, question mark times two, I want to get that question mark by itself. Sometimes you use an X, but it means that's what I'm looking for. I divide both sides by two. These cancel, and then I have 12 over two, which is six. So if I go three miles in two hours, I go six miles in four hours. And again, my point here is to show you that what a proportion is, is when I have one ratio equal to another ratio. And the way I solve that is cross multiplying. On that note of ratio and proportion, it really all goes back to fractions, right? I mean, really, this is a fraction 3 over 2 or 6 over 4. They're all equivalent fractions. Um, I've been working on this forever, and I came up with these uh, measurement toolbox cards. So I'll put a link to these in the description as well. Um, the way you get really good at fractions, ratio, proportions, and all of this is you just got to practice it a lot. The other thing you want to do too, not only for the union exam, but when you show up on the job for the first day, is when somebody calls out a measurement of five and three eighths, you don't start counting little lines on the tape. You got to really be good with fractional measurement. This is what we use in the U.S. of A. Uh, and whether you like it or not, you just got to get good at it if you want to be good at your trade. These are red, white, and blue because they're, it's a US measurement system. The height of the box this way tells you what the denominator is gonna be. So this one goes really low, so that's why it's a fourth. The width of the box tells you the numerator, 12 lines reduced to three quarters. So these cards are another way to build fluency, and I'll put a link to those if you're interested. So let's take a look at these problems now. We're gonna set them up the exact same way as I did in that example one meter so that tells me one unit right there one meter is equal to 3.28 feet how many feet so that's what i don't know so i'm going to say how many feet i'm going to use x for how many how many feet are there in 30 meters and the reason why the meters are in the top the numerator is because the Meters are in the top over here. Feet are in the bottom over here, so feet are in the bottom over here. Again, I'm gonna cross multiply. One times X is just X, and X is equal to this times this, 30 times 3.28. So it should be over 90. I'll use a calculator here. And I have 30 
times 3.28 or 98.4. One thing you want to make sure you include are your units. So the answer is 98.4 and that's feet. One tick mark is feet. Okay, let's go to the next one, number 15. It's going to be the same thing. If one kilometer, so it gives me one kilometer, is equal or equivalent to 0.6 miles, how many kilometers, so it's asking me how many kilometers, that's what I don't have, how many kilometers would you have traveled in 42 miles? So the difference here is in this first one, in this first one, I didn't have the bottom. And in this one, I don't have the top, but it's gonna be the exact same way I do it. I'm gonna cross multiply. 42 times one is equal to x times 0.6. I wanna get that x by itself, so I divide both sides by 0.6, right? That's, if I'm multiplying this by this, the way I get rid of it is I use the reverse operation division. So 0.6x divided by 0.6, those cancel. And I do that to the left side. I'm gonna go on here and go 42 divided by 0.6, and I get 70. So this problem right here is 70 kilometers. Let's see if that even makes sense, right? One kilometer is less than a mile. So how many kilometers is this? Well, this has to be less, so I can see that does make sense, right? One kilometer equals 0.6 miles. So 42 miles equals 70 kilometers. So that makes sense. Okay, let's go to number 16. Kind of the same thing. A British thermal unit is the amount of heat required to raise one pound, so that's a pound, of water one degree. How many BTOs, BTUs, British thermal units, would be required 45 pounds, or I guess it's LBS, 45 pounds, 18 degrees. So I don't have a variable here to solve for, but if one pound is one degree, 45 pounds is 18 degrees, I'm just going to do the 45 pounds divided by the 18 degrees, and that'll give me 2.5. And what unit is that? Well, that 2.5 is pounds per degree. And we know that a British thermal unit is pounds per degree. So that is a BTU or a British thermal unit. The big takeaway is that I'm setting one ratio equal to another ratio and cross multiplying this to solve. So this one was 2.5 BTUs or British thermal units or pounds per degree. And then lastly, number 17 here, the column of water is 2.31 feet high and it exerts a pressure of one pound per square inch. So that square is saying square inch. So it's 2.31 feet is the equivalent pressure of one pound per square inch. How much pressure, so that's what we're looking for down here. Pressure is gonna be in pounds per square inch. How much pressure will 46.2 feet exert? 46.2 feet. Again, my units have to be the same. So in the top has to both be feet, and then the bottom is pressure. So I'm gonna cross multiply. 2.31 times x is equal to one times 46.2. I wanna get x by itself. I divide both sides by 2.31. Then right here, let me clear that. I have 46.2 divided by 2.31, and that gives me 20. So x is equal to 20, and that's gonna be a pressure measurement. It is pounds per square inch. So this answer here is 20 pounds 
per square inch, and that's my pressure. So all, all of these are really very similar um, in that they're giving you one thing over another, which is a ratio. You take that ratio, set it equal to another ratio, and then you solve for the unknown. The key thing to remember is that your units in the top have to be the same, and the units in the bottom also have to be the same. I think I did do these in the other test as well, but if you didn't see that video, I'll just keep going through these. Um, these are more geometry, but they are similar as well, because a lot of geometry is really just ratios. In fact, this number pi, this number pi is a ratio. It's a ratio of circumference divided by diameter. So it's kind of the same thing as well. So in number 18 here, what is the circumference of the circle? It gives you the equation pi times diameter, and then it gives you a radius of 24 inches and a decimal approximation. So I just take these numbers and plug them in. I take that number and I'm gonna plug it right in there. Radius is 24, diameter goes all the way across. So for me to plug this into diameter, I gotta double it. So two radiuses equal one diameter. So the circumference is that number, pi 3.141 times the diameter 48, and that 48 came from two of those. So my calculator, I'll do 3.141 times 48 to get a circumference of 150.76, 150.76. What is the area in the figure above? So what's the area of that circle? Area is pi, well that's given, 3.141, times radius, that's given, 24, to the power of two, so squared. One important thing to note here is before you multiply these, you gotta square this first. Order of operations is PEMDAS, and that stands for parentheses first, then exponents, which that is, then multiplication. So ex exponents come before multiplication, so I gotta do that first. On my calculator, I'll go 24, there's my square button right there, squared equals, so 24 times 24 is 576, times pi, 3.141, and that gives me 1,809.2 for my area. And lastly here, using the formula c squared, this thing squared, plus this squared, plus that squared, what is the length of side c in figure two? Well, I'm looking for this. I'm using this formula. It's called the Pythagorean theorem. I gotta take this measurement and square it. So I'm taking a, I'm squaring it, plus b, b is this measurement. I'm squaring it, a little t there. And that's gonna be equal to this, squared. So going back to my thing on PEMDAS, I got to do my exponents way before I do addition. So I'm going to do 15, there's my square button, equals 225 plus 20 squared, 400 equals C squared. Then I'm going to add these two together, 225 and 400 is 625, that's equal to c squared. I have to get c by itself, so I take the square root of both sides. Square root reverses a square, just like division reverses multiplication. So I take square root there, that gives me c by itself. And then on my calculator, um, see, I know it's hard to see right there. But because it's the reverse of a square, it's that little blue key above it. There's my square root. I use my second square root, a 625, and I get C is equal to 25. So hopefully that helped. I uh, really just kind of wanted to do some more that I missed on that first video. Ratio proportion, a little bit of geometry, area and circumference of a circle, and Pythagorean theorem to find the length of a side in a triangle. This is Jonathan at Topsaw. Uh, if this video helped you, please hit like and subscribe. I teach high school math and shop. 
Um, so I use this math all the time. It's, uh, it's good to get it down, not only for the union exam, but just so you could solve more problems. All right, well, thank you for watching. I appreciate, appreciate your viewership.